It's been three years since Mac Miller was found no longer alive with his hands in the praying position and the bed in his own home by his personal assistant. He must have felt himself ODing and asked God to save him. Quite a sad way to die. It's been two years now since three men led by a guy named Cameron Pettit were charged with supplying him with the drugs that led to his death. And uh, just um, think about this week, their, their trial is gonna start. So let's talk about the case of Mac Miller. Cameron James Pettit, 28 of West Hollywood, Stephen Andrew Walter, 46 of Westwood, which is on the west side of LA, and Ryan Michael Revis, 36, former West LA resident who re relocated to Lake Havasu, Arizona were charged in a three count indictment and they're finally about to go on trial in downtown LA in federal court uh, now. So this story isn't just me telling another gossip piece about a, a celebrity that OD'd. Um, it's kind of struck a nerve with me and is interesting because being, now I'm very low on the rung of fame, but I am in highly weird and um, I'm a student of history. I was thinking a lot about, you know, the ways that highly weird really is weird and um, makes me think of uh, Europe and the colonial age and prior, the age of uh, kings and castles. And you had um, a system where the royal people were entertained by people called courtiers and courtesans. Courtiers were usually men who did usually something productive. It could be a tutor, could be a soldier, could be an artist. Somebody like Leonardo da Vinci was a courtier. And the courtesans were women. I mean, in the textbook definition, they're called prostitutes. But they don't have to be prostitutes, just women who entertain the court. And here in Hollywood, celebrities are living like the royalty of the past because they got money and power, but unlike um, people that earn their money doing corporate things, they have a lot of free time on their hands. So that's what you have in Hollywood, all these worthless people, many of whom came to LA from other places thinking that they were gonna be the celebrities and now they just end up supplying the drugs, the sex, or perhaps just company for lonely, rich, troubled celebrities. They come and go like the Super Bowl. They're not very memorable. Their faces blur together. Mac Miller crossed paths with a courtier that sold him some F pills that cost him his life. And the same thing happened to Prince and it happened to uh, celebrity rocker Tom Petty. It happens to a lot of people out here. And your question for the day is this. If the government is going to charge people like the three guys that sold Mac Miller the drugs that killed them, if they're going to charge them with murder, what about all these hangers-on, which includes sometimes people's own family, that let them become dope fiends and don't say anything? Because when you're drunk and high all the time, you spend money you wouldn't normally. So Mac Miller, as we will see from the text messages I'm going to read, had built up quite a poly drug habit. He had been in a relationship with Ariana Grande for a while. So if you think that fame, fortune, and even the love of a beautiful woman will make you happy if you're not happy on the inside, or perhaps if you're being pumped full of drugs, well, he's proof that it doesn't, because he had all three. Now, Ariana Grande, after their breakup, said this, I'm not a babysitter or a mother, and no woman should feel like they need to be. I have cared for him and tried to support his sobriety and prayed for his balance for years. Of course, I didn't share about how hard or scary it was while it was happening, but it was. Now, as a fellow famous person, Ariana Grande wasn't interested in seeing Mac Miller stand high and out of it all the time, like the dirt bags around him. And once she left his life, Apparently that's all he had left and he ended up no longer with us. Here's some of the text messages from the night Mac Miller 
bought his fatal doses and these were are being used in federal court against the guys charged with them. I don't quote these to engage in you know gossip type stuff but I just want to show that he's not someone who just was casually buying a few pills like many of us do and bought one bad one he had built up a serious drug habit and he was at the studio ordering this stuff so lots of people had to have known he was uh, you know had a bad drug problem and apparently nobody really took a firm hand and stopped it because you can't stop people from using drugs if you really care about them yo yo what's up did you hear back about Adderall nah I couldn't find any all good you don't have lean do you no lean perks I got some Dilaudid twos but that's about it I could get yellows and blues though blues as far as perks yeah 30s when can you get them probably in an hour or two they're 30 each any chance I could get 10 of those 10 bars and an 8 ball yeah for sure I'll get back when I'm about to pick them up could you come through earlier so that's Mac Miller and Cameron Pettit and Miller just ordered an 8 ball 10 Xanax bars and 10 oxy pills 300 milligrams of oxy for himself presumably this was at like 3 in the morning so he's in the studio recording I don't know if he's there apparently by himself or somebody there, but that's a lot of drugs to order to do. That's not a party. That's you got a problem. An eight ball, ten Xanax bars, and ten. And when he was found dead, most of that stuff was gone, and it was only 36 hours later. So while he was waiting for Cameron Pettit to make a delivery, it was taking too long. So he called uh, a madam, a woman that apparently he had gotten escorts from before and they exchanged these text messages cam is supposed to be pulling up and he isn't answering i don't know hun is there any anybody else with the shit i can send some with the girl lol i need a few things i have everything lol they talk about drugs and escorts for a minute and mac miller basically ends up agreeing to get a 700 dollar an escort an hour escort sent over just so he can get the drugs too. Now this is what I mean about a whole class of low lives in Hollywood who want to keep the celebrities high so they can milk them for as much as possible. He agrees to a prostitute he didn't ask for in the first place just so he can get the drugs and if from the text matches as it appeared they didn't even have sex and she ended up staying many hours more than an hour which she didn't ask for and she billed him for it and etc but more on that in a second so here's the price list of what Mac Miller got from her 10 Norcos $50 no I'm sorry 5 Norcos $10 each 50 bucks 10 Adderalls 100 bucks two grams of cocaine free because he ordered a girl a thousand and twenty five dollars of which 700 of it was for the girl and only 300 was for the drugs so that's classic drug addict behavior and when you're dealing with people with a lot of money they'll pay lots of extra money just to get the money now I was telling an anecdote to my friend the other day about a small town in Michigan where somebody told me they made fifteen hundred dollars off an eight ball of crack because it's expensive up there plus they would give it to people on credit triple charge them blah 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 so people desperate for drugs with extra money you can make a killing so that's why they like to keep these celebrities doped up so there's a lot more texts but to summarize the madam sends over an escort with some drugs and Cameron Pettit also arrives with the original order so he's got an eight ball plus two grams plus like 10 Xanax, 15 Oxycontins. He's got a lot of stuff for one person. The escorts ends up staying the night. The madam hits him with a bill of over $3,000. He complains through text saying she just stayed on her own and was just chilling while he made music in the studio. Uh, he was getting high and the whore hung around as long as possible and then of course He's famous and has money, so at some point they argue a little bit on the text, but you know, he does like a rich person is gonna do. He ends up just paying to get the problem out of his hair. 
So Mac Miller then is found deceased about 36 hours after he gets these two uh, deliveries and the girl comes and goes. The police come in and process all the remaining pills that were left he hadn't taken and discover that the pills from the madam were real. So neither she nor the escort were charged, but the pills from Cameron Pettit had the F-bomb in them. The other two men facing trial in federal court, uh, one is the guy who had the pills initially and I guess the feds think he knew they were counterfeit and then the, the middleman guy who brought them from him to Cameron Pettit. According to the legal complaint, Pettit allegedly sent direct Instagram messages to friends uh, showing his reaction to the rapper's overdose death. One text allegedly written after Miller's body was found read, I think I should probably not post anything just to be smart. Four days after the musician's death on September 11th of 2018, Cameron Pettit is alleged to have written, nothing's happened yet, but it might. He allegedly later added to the same friend, I'm going to get off the grid, move to another country, but he didn't do that. In fact, what made Cameron Pettit look really bad to the feds was him and these same guys kept going for a whole year. And I guess at this point, I don't know if they got their DMs and texts after the fact or they were, you know, uh, intercepting them as they went. But the same guys kept selling pills and all the way up to August 20th of the whole next year, a few weeks before they indicted them, um, they were still doing deals on direct message and text for these same pills. Uh, starting as recently as a month after Mac Miller's death, Andrew Walter agreed to sell Pettit another 10 blues, Oxy 30s, according to the indictment, which alleges other drug deals between the two men over the course of 2019, with one as recent as August 30, 2019, just a week before they were all arrested and charged in Mac Miller's demise. The indictment further alleges that Ryan Rivas was involved in drug trafficking activities in June and quotes a text message he sent after realizing he was negotiating a narcotics transaction with unknown person that reads in part, people have been dying from fake blues left and right. You better believe law enforcement is using informants and undercover to buy them on the street so they can start putting in people in prison for life for selling fake pills. Uh, he was right. As in, at, the indictment press, at the indictment press conference, the feds had this to say. These defendants allegedly continue to sell narcotics after Mr. McCormick, that's Mac Miller's death, with full knowledge of the risk their products pose to human life. All three defendants are charged with conspiring to distribute controlled substances resulting in death and distribution of fentanyl re resulting in death, each of which carries a mandatory minimum of 20 years and a potential maximum of life. And then the Walter Rivas guy is charged with being a felon in, uh, in possession of ammunition. When they caught him in Lake Havasu, he had drugs and a gun. Investigators believe Mac Miller died after snorting the counterfeit oxycodone pills supplied by Pettit. Fentanyl disguised as a pharmaceutical is a real killer. That's what the federal prosecutor had to say. So. That's what they do. They go after killers, and that's how they're treating these guys. I want to speak about it. Uh, they're painting me out to be some type of a bad guy, you know, and that's not the case. So I had to come out and just clear out my name, just for this, just just for my own my own reasons, you know. I, I don't I don't want people to think that I'm some evil monster just feeding people feeding people bad drugs. So that's not the case. I mean, it... Now here's a little follow-up story before we end about another. Courtier and perhaps also courtesan and another Hollywood elite, but this one who didn't die. This is Demi Lovato's dealer, quote, boyfriend, according to some people, though mm, the SEX, the two of them had, sounds more like the R word, according to her, but that could be self serving. Uh, a couple years ago, Lovato was hospitalized in L.A. for 12 days following a drug overdose, so she almost died. She was in the hospital for almost two weeks, and then she got inpatient care. Now, after Lovato OD'd, it seems like on Fent, uh, the slime bag gave a TMZ interview. His name's Brandon Johnson. 
I won't play much so as to avoid copyright, but you can get a feel for the type of person he is. And there's guys like this floating around at the clubs in Hollywood. They're easy to see. Johnson admitted on camera that he supplied the quote aftermarket pills. That means fake. Aftermarket means fake. So he knew what he was selling. So he definitely would have got charged if she would have passed. And he's such a high idiot, he said it on the TMZ interview. He clearly looks out of it during the interview. I'm sure if Demi would have passed, he would have been in the same legal straits as Cameron Pettit. Brandon, however, was never investigated because the police categorized an overdose as a self-induced medical emergency because she didn't pass. After Lovato went to rehab, she went on to more professional success, but Brandon the Slime Bag Johnson went on to lose his footing as a member of the Hollywood court because he told the business on TV in addition to selling her poison. He once again made TMZ, this time when he was arrested and charged for shoplifting at a Macy's. And when they grabbed him up, he had heroin and ketamine in the Michael Kors backpack he had stolen. At a Macy's in the Valley, uh, Brandon stole a Michael Kors backpack, a pair of pants, and a Puma hoodie. Store security found the stolen items worth 440 bucks, as well, in the, as well as the H and the K in the Michael Kors backpack. And once he was seen telling Demi Lovato's personal business on TMZ, I'm sure he was ostracized because he was just another, because he was just another shoplifting dope fiend, which is probably really what he was all along. He just lucked up into being in the circuit of someone like Demi Lovato. And whatever you think about celebrities and their drug problems, if they've gotten to be a celebrity, they must be talented and hardworking, which is more you can more than you can say for all the lowlifes to float around them, trying to live off of them. So if you wonder why so many celebrities fall victim to substance abuse, certainly the number one problem is that the same source of creativity is often the same source of pain, but number two is, if you give people drugs and let them have them and act like it's okay and that they're supposed to, well, a lot of people will. And drugs aren't fun, drugs do make you feel bad. And when you got unlimited money and too much free time, you get into doing too many of them. And a lot of these people develop yo-yo depression problems and they think it's their own pain and suffering, but really, people got them on drugs. That's why they feel bad all the time. So it's the same thing that happened to Prince, Tom Petty, many, many other people. I mean, the Gucci Mans, the Little Wayne, all of them, there's people that are bringing them the drugs. They could say, hey, wait a second, you're Lil Wayne, I'm not, you just had a seizure, I'm not selling you any lean, but people like doing that. They get to go back and kiki with whoever they know about, yeah, I'm the one who sells Lil Wayne or Mac Miller drugs. But what's the responsibility of a person when someone they're supposed to care about, whether as a family or friend or as a paid personal assistant, when they know that their celebrity benefactor has a substance abuse problem and if law enforcement's gonna hold dealers responsible, what about the other people around them? Just like they say it takes a village to raise a child, sometimes it takes a village to kill a star. This is Al Prophet, your trusty reporter, reporting from Holly Weird. Rest in peace, Mac Miller, Prince, and many, many others fell victim to their so-called friends and family, American Dope.